Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wherever you are in the world, it may be morning, it may be noon, it may be evening and night. Wherever you are, God is present and he is ready, willing and able to come to our rescue, to help us in every situation, to deliver us out of every challenge. We simply need to address him, allow him to do what he does and be grateful Give him thanks and praise. This is wow, what a show. And I've got to tell you that this show has, for me, lived up to his name in the last uh, couple of days. We've had some very stimulating and exciting conversations and teachings through the book of Proverbs. And um, that, that reading has been assisted by the attendance of some very astute people and some very uh, interested people, people who have engaged and listened and made comments and simply added to our fellowship in Christ while also embracing the possibility that there are others on the call or the uh, podcast who are, are wanting to know more about our faith. And we invite everyone to join us. Good morning, Sister Light Touch. This is wonderful that you're here so early. <laughs> Blessed be the name of our Lord and our Savior. I am Phyllis, the host of the podcast, usually, but I am assisted by Pastor John Thomas. He's such a, a wonderful human being whom God has called to help us understand the fullness of the teachings of God so that our abundant life is lived more victoriously. Good morning, Shelly. So very good to have you join us this morning. We are reading now from the seventh chapter of Proverbs. And like I said, if you know the date of the month, you also know the chapter we're going to approach because we're doing 31 days in Proverbs. This series is titled Apples of Gold. And why? Because the Proverbs says that a word fitly spoken is like an apple of gold. And as God's children, we want to speak as he speaks. Excuse me. <clears throat> he speaks wisdom he speaks love. He speaks victory. He speaks salvation. And so we are joining uh, these Proverbs. We're listening and we are attaining as much as we can. And as I also said, I think we should read Proverbs as many times a year as there are 31 days in a month. Um, and I know that might be a little excessive because we're reading other parts of the Bible as well. However, the Proverbs are, are here so that we can obtain wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it all. And the ending of it all, if I were to really uh, speak the fullness of God's word, because he says the author and finisher of our faith, right? <laughs> so he's both the beginning and the end. <clears throat> Please pardon my, my voice. I am really kind of struggling here with it because I have a little touch of allergy stuff. And that, com uh, you know, with with loss of sleep causes me to have a weak voice and I'm really trying to rectify it, but it doesn't want to cooperate. So I, I don't want to uh, have to do a lot of clearing of the throat, but I'm trying just to keep it, keep my voice um, strong enough to be heard. And while there is uh, in the studio or, or audience like Shelly, Light Touch, if you, either of you want to read with me, you certainly may call in and join. You know how very much I appreciate the fellowship. And so um, if you want to, you certainly may. I, I would love that. So here we go. Proverbs chapter 7. And in my Bible, of course, I read from the King James because 
it's the Bible that I most often use. And I forget sometimes that it might be better to read from another version just because everybody doesn't read it. But what I will do as I read is I will try to translate the archaic use of thee and thou into standard modern English if my eyes will go before me <clears throat> as, as usually it does. So here we go. The subscript is the wiles of a harlot. Solomon is really, really, um, you know, not down on the harlot, but he's really teaching his son, I believe, to shun some of the things that ensnared his own life. And of course, we know that he had 700 concubines and 300 wives. And so he was probably preyed upon a great deal by women who were seeking a good looking rich man. That's how we would say it in our modern uh, and contemporary English. So he says, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them upon your fingers, write them upon the tables of your heart. Say unto wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your kinswoman, that they may keep you from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatters with her words. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and beheld, behold, there met he, a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her own house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and she lies in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said to him, I have peace offerings with me. This day I have paid my vows. Therefore, I came forth to meet you diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen in Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves, for the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He went after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strikes through his liver as a bird based to the snare and knows not that it's life. It is there for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart decline to her way. Do not go astray in her paths. For she has cast down many wounded. Yes, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Wow. Wow. What a word, right? Now, good morning, mysterious prophet. This morning, uh, so far, there we are women, and we're reading this, right? And um, I believe, well, in my, in my own mind and heart, I'm thinking, that sounds more like a man to me. 
<laughs> because I'm a woman and I live on the other side of the experiences of enticements. And I know the deviousness of a man when he wants to subdue a woman, especially in our culture and time. But Solomon, remember, is writing to his son and living in a time when or the, 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 the act, you know, this whole uh, prostitution and adultery, this was contrary to the laws of Israel. And so they were uh, they were grave and, and extremely grave. So. In his writing from his own, I think, his own experience. He is sharing uh, out of that which he knows and those ensnarements that he probably, maybe he, he was fallen, but more than that, he, he knew them because of who he was. He was the king of Israel. He was a man of great wealth because God gave it to him and because David, his father, had great wealth. David, the man after God's own heart, imparted to his son Solomon, who was, by the way, the son of Bathsheba, whom uh, David had seduced, right? And so Solomon kind of knows all this, I'm sure, because his mother was one of David's many wives. Don't know how many he had, but we do know he had Bathsheba. He took her after he had her husband put on the front lines to die so that he could hide his own shame. And then uh, we know that he took Abigail from her crazy husband when he was running. So we know he had those two, you know, and we had he had many others. So um, it's amazing this detail that is brought out in in him sharing this a particular um, bit of wisdom with his son. So he has described very well and in detail this harlot, the woman who is. Uh, actually a prostitute and she's standing out uh, on the corner just waiting to seduce this man and she allures him with her what flowery words and her descriptive um, uh, in, in, in invitation to come and bed with her. Now she is a married woman doing this and she tells this young man that her husband has gone away and he's taken a bag of money and he won't be back. He must be on business. He's going for an appointed day. But uh, if that young man goes in there and the man actually is in cahoots with the woman, think about that one. If that young man goes in there and he does go, of course, because Solomon said he looked out his window and he saw this happening. He actually, you know, he witnessed it. He goes in and he stays with this woman but the husband comes home before she says he will. Suppose he also goes into this woman's house and she is herself a carrier of disease. Now, I worked in HIV and I'm telling you how much of this has happened and how many women have uh, been, a, uh, you know, have contracted the disease because of the enticement of men who had it but wouldn't tell. Isn't that something? And vice versa, uh, men who have contracted the disease from women who had it but didn't tell. However, a woman is far more susceptible to, to receive a disease on the, in a first misconduct, sexual misconduct, than a man because of the receptive way that intercourse is held with a woman, right? So... This is a very, this is a very grave and, and important picture. So now I know that as believers and as those of us who follow Jesus Christ, we're not likely to be ensnared in such a way. However, we know our young among us. We know, um, you know, the uh, the ways of teenagers. We may have friends who are not in Christ who might be inclined to live a lifestyle that could cause them this kind of pain. So we, we really do want to share with others. It's not just enough for us to have wisdom and to have obtained 
the knowledge of our God and the knowledge of why sin is, is important to recognize in our own selves. We want to avoid the allurements, the entrapments, the ensnarements of the smooth talker, whether they be male or female. And um, Solomon, again, he's repetitive in his um, plea for his son to obtain wisdom. And he's saying again, keep my words. That's what God says to us. Keep my commandments. If you love me, really and truly, you will keep my commandments. And uh, so we have a comment here from, from Light Touch. She says, the father seems to have been uh, trapped in like manner as described in this chapter. So he knows firsthand, that's right, that of which he speaks, um, the benefit of keeping God's word. And she laughs out loud. Life is better when we make God's word paramount in our obedience. We choose word, capital W, capital O, capital R, capital D. When confronting with deceptive opportunity, run the other way. Absolutely, you bring up another point. God says, or Jesus Christ tells you, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. And yet it is also written in the epistles that when we resist the devil, he will flee from us. And he, it is also written uh, that we should, the young, young men should flee uh, fornication and sexual immorality. Run from that. Absolutely run from that. In this world, you know, you can hardly watch a sitcom or just a, you know, just a PG, they rate these things, PG-13, PG-4. It doesn't mean a thing almost because the, the imagery that is flashed before your eyes there bespeaks this kind of a lifestyle. Not so much with a harlot, but it's like everybody now is a harlot. <laughs> you know, we're just living these promiscuous lifestyles and it seems so normal. So when a child has been brought up with this, what, how does, how does he have, you know, a differentiation between, how does he know or she know what is not good? See, we think it's a, it, it is against God that we sin for sure, because the Lord would not have the people that he has created in his own image act like not him, but the uh, opposer. And God has set these laws before us to keep us safe, to keep us from the death that follows it. When you live a life of treachery and immorality and stealthiness, when you're living in that lifestyle, every, everything that you do has a, a final reward. Some, you, you're, you're culminating you, it's always moving towards an end, just the same as if you live a life that is uh, morally upright before God and that works in uh, the keeping of his commandments. There is an end to that as well. One is a good end, one is a more fruitful end, and the other is detriment and death. And and God is not, he's really, is, it's not hyperbole here. It's not exaggerated. It's not beyond what we can see. Because you see, the end doesn't come as soon as you do it. I mean, sometimes it does, really. Sometimes, you you know, you make a wrong turn and the next thing you hear is the result of that turn. But but sometimes it, it creeps in slowly. It comes upon you. You know, I've... I've I've done a lot of outreach, and so I have heard a lot of stories, and I know a lot of lifestyles firsthand. So, for example, a, a young person can think that they are getting by with um, selling drugs, for example. This is just, you know, th this is not a personal indictment against anyone. This is just to tell you that you can go on for a minute, maybe, and make a really good sum of money. But there are stakeouts to find you, and there is no mercy when you are found. So young men who who may be uh, sold or didn't sell, but were affiliated with those who did sell, uh, they received gross amounts of time in incarceration. 
it's it's a terrible end. It's a wrong turn that may not even have lasted for more than, I don't know, a week, two weeks, maybe. Well, when they're staking you out like that, it probably has gone on for months already. But it happens, you see. And you think you're getting by, but you're not getting by. So Solomon is pleading once again. Keep my words and lay up my commandments with your, just keep them, lay them up and, and can't hold on to them. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Learn to love the law of God. I love thy word, O oh Lord. David writes it and he says, I hide, I hide your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. And, and darlings, let me tell you, if you're like me, you have to hide it in your heart, in your mind, and, and on the wall of the bathroom window. You got to hide it everywhere because you're, you need for it to be planted inside. You need to remember it, not after the deed, but before the deed. When you're riding down the street and you see the poor and the destitute, and they may ask you for something, you need to remember right then and there that God's heart is with the poor, the destitute, the downtrodden. And however he speaks to you to support or help them, you must obey, right? Because the Lord is holding you responsible for that opportunity to do what you can for another human being, especially those who are disenfranchised in the way that they are. And we make very harsh judgments against such people if we ourselves have never been there. But God does not do that. He knows their heart and conditions, and he will set them before you. Yes, I am an advocate for helping those. I'm going to tell you something else that I advocate. If a drug addict asks me for $5, I'm giving it to him or her. Because you see, I know the pain and the suffering there. And I know that if I could give them, first of all, some food, they really do need to eat because a lot of them are in such pain and that's do they they don't eat. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give them enough money to keep from doing some other crime for that moment in that time. But I'm not just gonna do that. I'm also going to give them the gospel as best I can in that moment. I'm going to tell them that there is deliverance. And if I know the resources in my community, I will also refer them. You see, this is the heart of God in operation. And we, as his people, his children, we are the ones to carry the message of his love, to be his love and his end extended. So Solomon is again telling him to bind these laws and commandments to himself. And he says, tell wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your kinswoman, stay close to them. And then in this, he says, they will keep you from this strange woman and from the stranger who flatters with words. And I purposely left out the pronoun with her words, because this is the word of God to his people. And as women, we would say his words. As a young man, you will say, or an older man, who or whatever you or however old you are, her words. But the the to me, the metaphor of the strange woman throughout, it, it, it stands literally, but it also stands metaphorically for me. Because the strange woman is a strange thing and by strange foreign to the word and the law of God. And when we are discerning our uh, relationships, when we are discerning our own actions, we have to weigh them against or uh, examine them in light of God's word and see if we are indeed walking in his way. In our session last night with Pastor Thomas, this is something I love about Pastor Thomas. You cannot even uh, use a wrong word with him because he his antenna is way up with regards to the, to the law of God. 
Psalm 119.9 says, How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to God's word? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Compassion for others is important. Oh, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are light touches comments. And that's right. Absolutely. The psalm that I quote almost every morning, the heavens declare the glory of God. But you we go on to, and, and the first of, is all about the declaration of the glory from the creation itself. And then the psalmist writes, the law of the Lord is perfect. Hallelujah. Perfect in every way. There is not a mistake in it. It is mature and advanced thinking, acting. It is transformational. The law of the Lord is perfect. And the, it further says it enlightens the heart. That's right. And you know, I read an article on the heart and this article astounded me. I, I doubt I could go back. Well, maybe I could. I'm going to research it so I can talk about it with a little more um, clarity and, and uh, accurateness. But the, the thing that astounded me, <clears throat> excuse me, I read it a, a few years ago, is that your heart also has a mind. Can you imagine that? And so we have so all, we, all these references in the Bible about the heart, the heart, the heart. And, and uh, Jesus Christ tells us, and it is written also in the Old Testament, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And Jesus says further, out of the heart flow the issues of life. The heart, the desire, that seat where you hold in um, with, 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 with a, a clutched hands, you keep whatever is in your heart. And let me tell you, it's hard. It's difficult. I shouldn't say hard. Difficult to change a man's. We say their mind, but the mind is the center of process. Our minds process and connects nerves and all that stuff. The brain, I'm talking. But this old heart of ours, <laughs> it holds the love of our lives. You see, those things that we cherish are held in our heart. So references the word of God. And so we must keep our hearts in all diligence, it's written. Keep that heart. And that's what Solomon is further saying. Say to wisdom, you're my sister. I'm walking with you. You know, uh, Anna Cain uh, gave us a lesson in Proverbs. I forget which chapter. I think it was for chapter uh, three or two. And she said she loves the personified use of wisdom. Wisdom personified, given life. You see, that's what personification is. It's those things that don't have life. We give two life. We give human characteristics to, so we say, uh, um, <clears throat> this table. My money walked from this table. That's a personification of money. Somebody took it. It didn't walk. Someone took it. But that's a personification of money. And, and so wisdom here also is personified. Call her your sister. Uh, uh, make her uh, your kinswoman, right? Now you're walking with her. There's life there. And there is the import of life to your life when you can see it that way. And therefore, uh, Solomon is doing that. Foolish men, uh, like touch rights, foolish men think no to hide themselves from God by hiding God from themselves. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, a quote from John Trapp we have to commit our way to our Heavenly Father and heed his instruction good morning Tony Richie it's so good that you're here yes hello have a great day to, uh, yes a great day to you so Solomon is doing this that, and he says if you do this she will keep you from the strange woman and from the stranger from the words that flatter for then he tells the story what he saw at his window. Now, darlings, let me tell you, my fellow yoke fellows, my my beloved also in the kingdom, my sisters and my brothers out there, that you don't know what it means that you join in and that you share your comments. Because you see, I believe in fellowship. Us together in church, 
What he's really doing is giving us relationships. And those relationships mean that we are able to discuss, share, and bear one another's burdens, as well as uh, rejoice together in the beauty of our work with the Lord. Um, so I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you so much and so so very glad that you're here. And I encourage you truly to share your comments because your comments feed uh, our discussion and your comments sometimes are, you know, revelation from the Lord and we all need to hear it. We all need to share and know it. And so I, I just am so very glad that, that you do that. God is really good. And, you know, as, as tired as I sometimes feel or get when I begin to share on, on the podcast with, with uh, those of you who come in or just to talk about the word of God, I am, I am energized. I am lifted up. And the troubles of the day find their particular focus. You know, I, I put them in the right category. <laughs> they are not nearly as important as, the, as these moments when we are in fellowship with our Father and with each other. I love you very much. I so appreciate uh, you coming in, every one of you. I also ask that you share the this July podcast on the reading of the Proverbs with a young person or with someone who is outside of the realm of the kingdom, that they may hear what the Bible has recorded for us to live by. And I think that if you've never read through the Proverbs, right, or if, or if you're someone outside of the Bible, I think you'd be rather surprised uh, of the love, about the love, or with the, what you find here. The Bible is really and truly a treasure. And uh, we are reading or we're watching so many films, you know, that playwrights and, and other people who don't know the Lord um, are producing for us. And we are laughing, you know, at the stuff and we are enjoying it only to have been fed for the hour and a half or however long that movie lasts, you know, or that uh, series. We've been fed the wisdom and the counsel of the ungodly. Not that it's always contrary, but in totality, it cannot be complete because it is out of the flesh and the minds of men and the hearts of men. So if we counter it with a knowledge and understanding of God's word, we will be able to discern and recognize when there is a shift in what we are hearing and what the Lord wants us to hear. I just thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mommy. <laughs> I thank you so much for, for joining me. And I invite you, uh, those of you who have come more than one one time, you know, and you're interested, just to read with us. You know, I'll, I'll do, or together we will do the comment. But if you want to read with us, all you have to do is, is um, you know, like if, if tomorrow, if I don't have a reader coming in, if I've already, if you know, someone's already volunteered for that chapter, that's different. And what's today? Wednesday. That what I don't even know what today is anymore. I'm going so far. Oh, it's Thursday, isn't it? Well, <laughs> um, if someone has already been invited to come in, you know, they've signed up, then uh, that is a different. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. So this woman in chapter seven states that her husband is not at home. Hmm. She mentions the scenes, the sense, myrrh and aloe, which could be an indication to the young man that if he protects, he will it will lead to death. Absolute. Ooh, I touch. See you see these nuggets? I didn't eat, I missed it. Absolutely. Because that was uh these were the spices that were used to um uh cleanse right? The, the dead body to keep the odors down. They're put in when, when the people were prepared for their graves. What a good little nugget. That's great. That's right. Absolutely. And he, uh, Solomon, is assuring 
this, the young man that he's writing to, that death does ensue. Death follows such actions. And so that, that is good, very good, very good um, picking out. I, I appreciate that so much. So as I was saying, though, if, oh, so Light Touch is going to read for us Thursday. Yeah, that was his chance to run. When he heard that, he should have run, but he didn't. Solomon said he did not. He went in with her. And so our assumption is that if he didn't die that day, death was upon him already. Uh, now, in in our day, having having Jesus Christ, um, you know, live amongst men, fulfill the law, and issue for us a new covenant, we know that we can commit such things that do indeed lead to death and still find forgiveness. And I'm so grateful to God that he is that God. When we recognize our sins and understand our need and we call on him, he hears us. Oh, praise the Lord. He hears us. And if you come, he says, the invitation is there. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses what, 27 or so to 29 or 28 or, you know, just towards the end of the chapter. It is written, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Take and learn of me, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest unto your soul. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's how it goes. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, when you connect with me like two oxen, pulling the plow, yoked together, beast of burden, working, pulling anything, right? They're pulling burdens. But Jesus Christ likens our relationship to him as a yoking together. And he then says that that burden is going to be lighter. And that yoking is going to be the, the method by which you give up. Oh, glory to God. You give up the work because you see he's stronger, more powerful. He is more able to pull this life's burden. Life is a burden. Life is life brings so many challenges. Life brings so much that we have to overcome. We really do. But the Lord has promised to do it for us. And so we find Rest while he does the work. All we have to do is come to him. All we have to do is say, yes, Father, I need your forgiveness and the hope of eternal life that you ensured me when you died on the cross. That's all we have to do. This in itself shows us how God gives us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so that we can recognize deception. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The story, the story. And I love the way Solomon says, I looked out of my window. And let me tell you, okay, so Solomon's uh, living in a big old castle temple, you know, big, 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 big place, wonderful place. And he probably had windows every which way or places to look out, right? And um, we, too, have windows. And we don't live in the big castle, and our windows don't go on all sides of the house and face, you know, the marketplace necessarily. But when we go out and we encounter others moving about, we're looking through the window of life, and we're seeing the despondency, the lack of understanding, the need. We are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are the witnesses of salvation. We are the messengers who take the word wherever we go, all day, every day. Never cease. For death is, is, is entrapping many of our young people. So welcome, Mary. So sorry that you're coming at this hour. We're just finishing up. And um, I'm inviting everyone who would like to read to simply 
tell me so. If there has not been a, a prior um, appointment for a reader, I am more than willing. And let me tell you, you can just come right into the studio. You can send in that uh, request for invitation, become a co-host and read, right? And make comment with, with me as I go. Oh, um, <clears throat> but when I've invited a reader, they've done some some preparation. And so I would never, you know, um, not, not do that. So I see that we're going to have uh, my dear sister on Thursday morning to read. And um, that'll be that'll be really great. And I invite every one of you to join us as often as you can. And more than that, I I in, invite you to invite young people. Let me tell you what I do, right? I'm sitting here. <laughs> I, I am so unobservant. This is the first time. My girlfriend, and, and, you know, who comes on with me a lot, she's always saying, I, I invited someone. I, I, not because I think I'm good. God knows I do not think that way about myself. But what I know is that our young people do not know. And between Pastor Thomas and those things which the Lord gives me to share, I am focusing on, not only on the betterment of our lives as Christians, but on the introduction of God's wonderful love to those who do not know. I am pained by the state of affairs with regards to the lack of understanding of our young people for God's word, for their distaste of the church, for not wanting to be around other Christians because they have found something lacking. Now, sometimes they just don't want to hear, you know, we can't change that altogether. But sometimes, sometimes through their observation of those things which were supposed to represent holiness and love, they have found that they don't. So hearing God's word is one way to first introduce the Lord to them. And secondly, they will come to know that we are people striving. And the reason that we're so excited about our God is because he will pardon us when we too lack understanding and consistency in our own lives. But we are his children and we can praise him because he will never let us go. He promised to keep us, never to leave us. And here we are, trusting him in that. So I, I, I would love it. I have been inviting every young man in my contact list. Every person I look down to contact, well, they could have been kids that I taught. They don't know me, you know, after the classroom, they don't know me. <laughs> but I'm inviting them anyway <laughs> so that they can hear. And I ask you to do the same. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. Um, yeah, I said Mary already. Uh, we're just at the end of the podcast. And I haven't, once again, if you would like to read, please indeed um, just, you know, tell me so. And you can uh, come come into the co-host seat and be a part of of the whole thing. You are a big part of it because your comments really bless my heart and add to our, our fellowship and the conversation here. But with that, my darlings, I have indeed come to my final words. Save these. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are greater than great. You are more than the wow <laughs> that we speak when we see magnificence, when we see the exceptional, when we observe beauty, God, we cannot help but say, wow, whether it be by another person's hand, but definitely when it is by your powerful hand. Every day we behold your greatness. Every day you're on display. Every day we hear the speech of the day and we behold the knowledge of the night. God, you are more than wonderful, more than wonderful. And we bless you. I ask you also, Lord God, to blanket and cover everyone who has assisted in today's reading of the Proverbs, these apples of gold that we are receiving. Bless the day 
in which now we find ourselves and God impart to us this wisdom. May we indeed have her personified in our lives as we take her as our sister, as we receive her as our mother, as our, our the Holy Spirit, you see, is, is, the, is the memory that comes to us. The Holy Spirit brings it back. You have ordained it, that it would be our minister. We ask you to keep us constant in it, Father, that we do not forget that we really do walk in the fullness of it. And when we remember your word and we were going to do something that was a natural, you know, just a natural response, let your word by your spirit have the empowerment we need to change the course. This I pray for every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And I hope your day is more than wonderful, too, that you have a really good time today in everything that you do. And God willing, I say we will meet again this evening at 830 to read chapter seven one more time. May the Lord our God praise, uh, be praised forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you again for joining us.